In this video, uh, we will discuss uh, what is hierarchical clustering. So, in last video, we discussed what is uh, k-means clustering, that is centroid based clustering. Yeah, this hierarchical clustering is a connectivity uh, based clustering. There are two major types within hierarchical clustering. One is uh, agglomerative, um, that is uh, called agglomerative nesting, like Agnes. Uh, we will see that in detail in this class. And uh, the other one is DBCU analysis, like uh, DIANA or DIANA. So, DBCU analysis, DI and DIANA from analysis. So, DBCU uh, hierarchical clustering or agglomerative hierarchical clustering. So, for the ACNES, uh, we build a tree from a bottom up. Uh, we will see what is tree, what is the bottom up is, and we will stop when we reach the root. Uh, so, for Diana, it is just opposite. We will start from the top and uh, we will reach when we reach all the data points, all the children in the given sample. So, we will see what is exactly this uh, bottom up and top down approach, what is the difference between Agnes and Diana. So, we will discuss only the Agnes in this uh, course. So, it is simple you can uh, understand how the other, other clustering algorithm works. Let us see hierarchical clustering. The same data set, uh, but I think uh, for some points were removed just to make it simple. Um, the idea of uh, hierarchical clustering is that uh, you have to uh, pick each and uh, every data point as a cluster because it is a bottom up. So, the number of clusters here is uh, 8, all the data samples is a cluster. So, each and every data point will act as a cluster. Okay, this is everything is cluster. Then you merge the most similar points. Uh, so, these are very similar, maybe this can be another cluster, something like that. So, you merge the most similar points in nest step, then merge the most similar points in nest step. So, till you reach all of this belongs to one cluster, till you reach the last step that is all this belongs to one cluster. So, you make a multiple levels. So, how do we merge the most similar points? There should be similarity measure, right? Like last time we saw what is a Euclidean distance to measure distance between centroid and the data points to pick which cluster to go. Similarly, here we also have to have similarity distances, right? Some similarity measure has a various formulas, okay? Uh, a lot of formulas. Uh, it is not important to know all the formulas here, but uh, understand there is some similarity function which measures the similarity between the two points. If it is similar, if this point is more similar to this point compared to this point, these two will be merged first as a step one. Okay? That is how the similarity measures is used. Let us see how this works in multiple steps. So, the first step uh, what I did, I considered every uh, data point as a cluster. Uh, so, we start with uh, 8. So, so what I say, uh, it is all the 8 of them here. So, all the 8 of them uh, here are clusters. So, in the, set, in the step 2, uh, we merge the most similar data points. By some measure, these two are more similar compared to these two. So, this is a one uh, cluster, this is another cluster, this is a three cluster. So, now we have uh, 5 clusters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 clusters as a step 2. Okay? Now, uh, this, two, this cluster and this cluster is similar compared to the other cluster. So, this is formed as another cluster, so another cluster, this two and this two. So, by some similarity measures, okay. consider now we have three clusters, one, two and this one, the three clusters at step three. At step four, we might have another cluster uh, combining these two. So, now we have two clusters and at step five, we have one big cluster. So, number of steps is not uh, depend on the data sample, number of data sample, instead it depends on the behavior of the data sample. Okay? So, it is like 8 data sample, it should be 5, no, no, it is not like that. 8 can be converged in uh, 6 or 7 steps or 3 steps or based on the behavior of the data. Okay? So, this is what hierarchical clustering, this is called actually agglomerative clustering. Agglomerative clustering starts with the one data point and tries to uh, create a clusters with the neighbors or similar measures. So, this cluster will be um, uh, described very easily with the dendrogram diagrams. 
So, dendrogram is the another type of uh, visual representation which we did not see in uh, descriptive analytics because we will see this. So, I thought not to discuss that multiple times. What is dendrogram diagram does is uh, this is not actual dendrogram diagram plotted from any library instead I just uh, drew this dendrogram in the PowerPoint. So, let us see how this dendrogram works. Um, let us uh, see how it works. If we give a numbers to some of the values, let us see let us assume some numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 ok. That is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, this is 4 and 5 and 6, 7, 8. Um, okay, that's kind of some changes here. This is not exact diagram, but let's see how it comes. If you consume that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, um, these two are similar measure. There's a distance similar, so this will be combined as a one cluster. So this is a step one. Okay, at step one these two will be uh, combined and uh, these two will be combined and these two will be combined and uh, at steps 2 and uh, this cluster and this point will be formed as a new cluster, it is a node, in this particular node there are one cluster and these two is there and these two is there. So, if I draw a line here after step 2, I should have 3 clusters right, 1 cluster, 2 cluster, 3 cluster. If I draw a line at say at here after step 1, I have 1 cluster, 2 cluster, 3, 4, 5 clusters. Initially I add 8 cluster, then I choose a 5 cluster, then if I choose 1, I have like um, 3 clusters, I can see 1, 2, 3. If I draw on the next steps, these two are combined to a new cluster at the step 3. Then if I draw a line here, I should have um, uh, 1 cluster, 2 cluster, then there is one more cluster, there is only one cluster after step 4. So, this uh, dendrogram tells that um, how to represent uh, agglomerated clustering in the visual uh, format. So, if you have a data, if you run uh, uh, Agnes algorithm, you might get this dendrogram diagram on your data points and that tells you um, how this uh, clusters are formed and you can choose which level you want to go. So, uh, I want to say I want to have three clusters, then uh, these data points uh, will be considered as so one cluster, this is another cluster and this is another cluster. So, you can create a uh, value you want to choose. Each data point is uh, each student ID. So, because you use to see each student's behavior, right? Uh, student 1's mark versus midterm. So, each data point is each student's ID. So, uh, I just wrote it uh, the, the sequential manner like 1, 2, 3, but uh, if you really look at the data point, this might be different. So, the three students belong to one cluster, other students belong to other cluster, other three students to other cluster. We are forming into three clusters. So, this is how the hierarchical clustering can be used. So, to implement hierarchical clustering, there are a lot of uh, tools available. We will also discuss some tools for that. So, give the data and uh, compute the hierarchical clustering and you choose your level based on your data and your need. Okay. So, hope you understood what is diagram and uh, what is hierarchical clustering. So, can you list down two drawbacks of hierarchical clustering algorithm? After listing it down, resume the video to continue. So, it is not easy to decide number of um, uh, clusters, but uh, you have a complete picture like uh, what if the cluster value equal to 1, what if cluster equal to 2. Uh, so, you have complete picture, there is no need to uh, have elbow method or uh, compute the uh, error function, there is no error function here because, uh, but you have complete figure, so you know where to choose. And uh, the, the distance of the lines also uh, important, I will tell you what is that lines in next uh, video, but let us see, um, uh, there are different similarity functions, uh, one is uh, single uh, connection or, uh, or uh, single link or, um, or average, there are a lot of uh, similarity functions. You should choose a right similarity function and uh, some similarity functions have uh, sensitivity to outliers. So, if there is outlier, some similarity function may not work. So, you have to understand which similarity function to choose. So, that is one drawback, I did not discuss that, but you can uh, check what are the similarity functions used in hierarchy clustering. And uh, the main uh, problem is uh, time complexity. So, 
um, n squared times it takes at each step. So, if you have uh, uh, say 4 steps that will be like 4 times uh, n squared times charges takes n square number of clusters at each step. Uh, if you have like a uh, first step 8 that will be like 8 uh, square 62 times 64 um, computationally costly happens at the step 1 then it combine into 5 clusters then 5 square times it takes. So, it will go in a logarithmic scale of complexity which is highly uh, computationally costly also time consuming. If you have very small data set uh, which you collect from 60 students with uh, 4 or 5 features do not worry about those things. So, for this uh, 60 students data 5 variables or 10 variables this time is not really important. For very large data sets you want to do a clustering in real time and you want to uh, give a feedback in a real time there the time is important. Okay. So, when you talk about time you also have to consider where you will be using is in the offline or in the real time you want to use this clustering technique. So, consider that. So, yeah uh, arithmetic clustering has a couple of drawbacks, uh, but uh, it is uh, easy and uh, uh, visually appealing, but uh, you do not know how to cluster, choose the clusters. So, some places um, in research we use k means clustering in other places we use arithmetic clustering. Okay, we will see the example of both uh, k means clustering and arithmetic clustering in a research paper in the next video. Hope you understood what is arithmetic clustering and uh, thank you.